Proverbs 16:16. 16, 16, How much better is it to get wisdom than gold, and to get understanding, rather to be chosen than silver? <clears throat> the natural meaning of this, as we've seen so many times in the Proverbs, is an illustration of the spiritual. This is a simple truth that very many, very few, very, very few people understand. If you take a look at this world, everybody is obsessed with money, with making money. And that used to mean gold and silver, as our text says. Now it just means a piece of paper that's only, it's not worth anything except that the government says it's worth something. What happens when they say it's not worth something? I don't know. But it's the pursuit of every person. Everybody's obsessed with making money or trying to. The scripture does say the love of money. There's a song, and I've heard it quoted wrong so many times, and I'm sure you have too. It says money is the root of all evil. That's not what it says. Evil's in the heart. It's the love of money. That's the root of all evil. But how many people do you know that are obsessed with learning? We don't even like the word, do we? It, it conjures up images of school that we didn't enjoy that much. And I'm sure there's exceptions to that. There's, I'm sure somebody somewhere is obsessed with learning. I just don't know any of them. And understanding things, even in a natural sense. We just wing it, don't we? We just want to get by. We just want to... <clears throat> satisfy and fulfill the lusts of our flesh in the easiest, quickest way possible. How much time do people spend learning as opposed to making money or trying to make money? Very, very little. Even here, we spend, what, three or four hours a week and then the whole rest of our life, we're probably in some manner or another pursuing the business of the flesh. Not always a bad thing, but it puts some perspective on it. And wisdom, of course, is not just an accumulation of knowledge. You can know a lot of things and be a fool, and you can be wise and not really know that much. That old blind man in John chapter 9, he said, I don't know, I can't answer all your questions, but I know this. I was blind, and he made me see. Now I see. <clears throat> so wisdom is not just an accumulation of information and knowledge, but in a natural sense, that has a lot to do with it. That's mostly what it is. It's, it's learning things and knowing things. And, but you know, even, again, some perspective on the emphasis that's put on actually learning. Even our institutions of education have little to do with learning. I know I was in them for a while. More than 12 years. <clears throat> College a little bit. And... Um, for the most part, it doesn't have that much to do with actually learning anything. And in order for people, especially young people, to learn anything, they, they need to be inspired to learn it. As long as it's just a chore, they're not going to learn that. Not really. If they do figure out how to answer the questions right, they're going to forget it. And how much of it is useless anyway? Much of the basic things that people need to know to function in this world are not learned. Except by painful experience sometimes. Well, I know this. If, if young people are going to be inspired to actually learn things, it's not going to happen at school. <laughs> it's not going to happen there. Not in my experience. There, there's rare exceptions to that. So this illustrates the spiritual. People are inspired by and motivated 
to fulfill the gratifications of the flesh. That's what people are inspired and motivated to pursue, and they do. They have no interest, for the most part, in the things of God. None. And again, another parallel is the places where the things of God are allegedly taught have nothing to do with finding out who God is. You're not going to find out about him in most churches, so-called churches. Now that verse we quoted a while ago, look at the context with me. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, please, with me. First Timothy six nine. Now this is talking to believers. This is not a this is not talking to the world. The world wouldn't understand this at all. But this is this is for believers. First Timothy six nine. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and the snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. That sounds bad, doesn't it? It is bad. But notice it doesn't say they that are rich fall into temptation. It says those that will be. In other words, you want to be. And I tell you what, most rich people, what do they want? To be richer. <laughs> In this world, that's the way it works, isn't it? So it's not being rich. It's not about having money. It's about the desire. But thou, O man of God, verse 11, look at that, O Christian, O believer, O child of God, O sheep, Flee these things. Not money. I'm going to show you that in a minute. It's not that. It's not flee money and the things that money can buy. Flee this thing of always wanting more and more and more. Run away from that. You're going to have to run away from it because your heart is full of it by nature. And follow after what? Righteousness. Godliness. Follow after Christ. Follow after being like Him. Follow after Him. <laughs> Imitate Him. And that's not about what He would do. That's about what He did do. Faith. Go through this world believing God. You see, there are certain things in this world that people do that you wouldn't do if you believed God. <laughs> and there are certain things you're going to do that most people never will if you believe God. Love. <laughs> people neglect that which is most precious and pursue that which is really worthless. The scripture says it's, it doesn't exist. It maketh itself wings and flies away. Patience, that steadfastness. To not be moved. You know, our biggest fight goes on in here. The steadfastness of the heart to, 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 to determine to know nothing save Jesus Christ. To determine to follow Him and, and lay hold of Him only and have no confidence in this flesh. Meekness, humble obedience to God. Fight the good fight. Of faith. It is a fight, isn't it? It's a fight. We're, we're warring with this flesh every day, which is what? It loves money, doesn't it? It loves gain. It loves the things that money can buy. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Wherein two thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. So you see the context of that is important. In other words, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. 
The Lord knows that you have need of these things. He gives us way more than we need, doesn't he? Every day. Way more. Another thing that the natural and the spiritual agree on is where these things come from. One of the things that people, sinners, hate the most, the most intense hatred, is to tell them that they're beggars utterly dependent upon God. They don't like that. Sinners don't like that idea. And, and it's true of everything. What, what do you have that you didn't receive? This world doesn't believe that. And that's the truth in natural things as well as with spiritual. Remember what the Lord said. We read Deuteronomy 8.18 not long ago, and this is the culmination of it. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get well. Haggai 2.8, the Lord said, the silver is mine, the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. He may give us some of it, he has, and he may continue to, but it's his. James 1.5, listen to this, here's the spiritual. If any man lack wisdom, where are you going to get some? Let him ask of God. Let him ask of God that giveth to all liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Look at me with, uh, look, look with me at uh, Proverbs 2, if you would, please. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. I believe this will help us on our text. Where does wisdom come from? Proverbs 2, 1, my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Don't just come to the worship service and, you know, sometimes, I, I've been right where you are. Oh, I started to say all my life, pretty much all my life. I remember when I was, you know, what church was to me was falling asleep on my grandpa, my papa's arm <laughs> and getting a piece of candy right before that. <laughs> he'd have it in his pocket, you know, he'd give me, he'd be like sneaking it to me. My parents didn't know about it. And then I'd fall asleep. It was a pretty good place to sleep. But, but ever since I've been paying attention or, or known anything about what was being said, you know, there's, there's been times even at conferences to where I'm barely hanging on. I'm, I'm just sitting there, you know, <laughs> barely hanging on. But may God give us grace as much as possible in this flesh to apply our hearts to what's being taught and said. Sometimes we can. Sometimes it's a lot harder. Yea, verse 3, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures. People search for hid treasures, don't they? But not this one, they don't. <laughs> That's why that illustration is used. Because everybody's always looking for that pot of gold, aren't they? The ship's going to come in. It already has, and we don't even care about it. As for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom. If you, if you lack it, ask him. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. That's why I prayed a while ago, Lord, don't let us just hear my words. Let us hear from you. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. <laughs> he is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Verse 8, he keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. 
Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. When? Verse 10 is what I, one of the things I wanted to really get to here. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and we already know how that happens, the Lord gives it. He just said that. And when wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant. It's not a chore. It's not a grief. It's pleasant unto thine soul. When God puts wisdom in your heart, knowledge is not so grievous anymore. It's not so taken for granted anymore. It's not so neglected anymore. It's something that you actually crave. It's pleasant. Pleasant to your soul. Learning the truth of Christ. Going through the Bible verse by verse together like we do. Learning the things of God and who God is and what he's done, his ways, his word, his will. There'll be nothing more pleasant to you than that when God puts wisdom in your heart. And that's my prayer for all of us. There's not much to this world. And as a believer now, you'll learn that more and more as you get older. There's not much to it. Doesn't mean you don't have to work in it and live, live in it, labor in it. There's not a whole lot to it. Solomon experienced it all, didn't he? We're going to look at that more tonight in our study in 1 Kings. But I want to read you part of, it's not tonight's study because we won't get this far, but it's in the same chapter. He said, it's all vanity and vexation of spirit. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. He doesn't say I might just add some of this other stuff to He will. He knows that we need what we need and he never just gives us what we need. He always gives more, doesn't he? We're his children. You just give your children what they strictly need? <laughs> I don't reckon. You're probably spoiling them, aren't you? Probably spoiling them just a little bit. God told Solomon to ask him for one thing. He said, "What well, name it. And Solomon asked for wisdom. Turn over there with me, please. In 1 Kings chapter 3, we'll close here. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5. First Kings 3, 5, in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast shown unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people, that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give, therefore, thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast thou asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, 
but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. Isn't that interesting? If having money was bad, the Lord would have said, I'm going to give you wisdom and be sure you stay away from money. Whatever you do, don't don't pursue money. Don't, don't have anything to do with riches or anything like that. No, that's not what the Lord did. He gave him what he asked for and what he didn't ask for. And what God clearly shows here is that money can be a great blessing. Think about it. He was pleased with Solomon here. <laughs> and he gave him money. He gave him a lot of money, a lot of things, a lot of riches and honor in this world. Money can be a great blessing, but not without wisdom. Not without wisdom. The chief principal thing is wisdom. Wisdom from God. Proverbs 4, 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Now think about who said that. The man that had some of it. The man who had the most of it. He had more of it than anybody's ever had before or since, other than, of course, the God-man. The Lord Jesus is the wisdom of God. But Solomon, God gave him wisdom, and he says to us, when, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you got to have it. you got to have it. you got to have it. And that's, of course, it's, it's wonderful to have some wisdom in natural things, but the wisdom of God is Christ, and He is our wisdom. And what a blessing. Let's pray together.